Question, why are bees important? What is pollination? Pollination is when an organism, such as an insect or an animal, transfers pollen to another plant. Plants are both male and female, and pollen comes from the male part of the plant. When pollen is transferred, it helps to create seeds, which grows more plants, and helps humans as well, giving us food and oxygen. The pollination is always by living organisms, wind, water, and rain, all the pollen as well. This is called abiotic pollination. Many staple crops are abiotic or self pollinated The importance of bees. Bees pollinate 40% of food that we consume. They don't intentionally do this, but all bees are still very important. Even if they don't visit flowers for nectar, they can visit flowers or plants for other reasons such as pollen to build nests or other uses. Bees pollinate much of the food we eat. They pollinate fruits and vegetables like apples, cranberries, melons, broccoli, blueberries, cherries, almonds, onions, cucumbers, grapefruit, avocados, and more. Without bees, more than one third of food would be lost. Without bees, we wouldn't be here at all. One example of a native bee of Minnesota is the mason bee. Mason bees are named after their habits of constructing nests with mud and other masonry products. Nests can be made in cracks and stones, but some species prefer to make them in hollows, such as wood or stems. Males exit from cocoons first and wait for females. When females emerge, they can mate one or more males. Then the males die. Females nest in narrow gaps in tube-like cavities. A few days after mating and selecting a nest site, she begins to gather pollen and nectar. She makes a wall separating the front from the back and leaves the female eggs in the back and males in the front. She then plugs a hole to the nest and flies off, with the eggs and provisions still inside. Within a few weeks of hatching, the larvae have eaten the provisions and starts being a cocoon. They start hibernating in the fall or winter while maturing into an adult. Mason bees are solitary, can vary in looks, rarely sting, do not produce honey or beeswax, or are immune to acarant and varroa viruses. Cuckoo bees with heavily sculptured exoskeletons and saber-like mandibles don't build their own hives, lack pollen collecting structures, and have reduced body weight. They enter the nest of pollen collecting species and lay their eggs in the host colony's egg cell. When the larvae hatch, they eat the host larvae's pollen ball and the host larvae itself. If the hosts are social, the kleptoparasites will remain in the hive, lay many eggs, and sometimes even kill the host bee. They are called social, brood, or nest parasites. Wool carter bees are known for their peculiar mating habits. Males will find a plentiful flower patch and wait for females fending off other males in the process. They are known to stay per, to a particular flower patch for up to 21 days. The smaller males will tend to make way for the bigger males. When females wander into a flower patch, the males will try to mate. Females will often mate to gain access to the flowers. Once mated, females will make their nests in pre-existing cavities and form plant trichomes into a ball, bring into the nest, fashion into cells, and deposit an egg and provisions into it. She then plugs the hole. Wood carter bees are smooth and slick and are mostly black with yellow spots. Some other pollinators. Some other pollinators include ants, bats, beetles, birds, flies, dragonflies, butterflies, and moths. Many bees are the main source of pollination, but animals and insects such as butterflies, moths, wasps, bumblebees, and other insects and other bee species are vital sources as well. Wind, water, and rain are also pollinators. These are called abiotic, meaning they aren't living. Some plants are self-pollinating. Pesticides target insects, mice, weeds, fungi, viruses, and bacteria, but they can also target bees. One dangerous pesticide is a neonicotinoid, a chemical that messes with the bees' immune system and can cause them to become lost or disoriented. Pesticides can kill the bee instantly or we carry back to the hive in nectar or pond. This can cause co entire colonies to collapse. This is called colony collapse disorder. To prevent this, limit the use of pesticides or clean or remove honey from the hive. Monoculture is dangerous to bees because they need different varieties of food. Monoculture is only planting one type of crop. Monoculture has long-lasting effects like reducing the nutrients in soil, leaving it barren and hard to grow other plants. So the farmers use chemicals to help the affect the nutrients. Every year, three-fourths of the USA's bees are trucked to California to pollinate monocultures, such as almonds. Monoculture can be good for industrial purposes, but polyculture, planting multiple types of crops, is better for pollination. A small invasive insect has been one of the main reasons for honeybee declines over the years. They're called varroa mites. Varroa mites can latch onto newly hatched larvae, developing larvae, and in winter when in adulthood. Varroa mites feed on bees' rich blood and circulate viruses such as acute bee paralysis virus, which pa paralyzes and kills bee, and deformed wing virus, which can deform the wings, decrease body size, and cause memory and learning capability loss. You can help bees by planting bee-friendly plants such as thyme, oregano, wild lupin, cow, coal, aster, and wild geranium. Make sure that one egg plant is blooming every season. Plant a community garden with native plants, herbs, fruits, and vegetables with a clean water source. Plant milkweed, and if you can't become a sustainable beekeeper and buy honey from local sustainable beekeepers. 
Try to eat organic and pesticide-free food. Advocate and speak up about the importance of bees and the importance of limiting pesticides. We depend on bees, yet we are the ones taking them to this group. Help them by doing these things.